Hey pig. Hey mama. Mama pig. <laughs> Y'all this pig is so over me checking on her. <laughs> I come out here and look because she is quite pregnant. Um, she's not like any moment do I don't think because I'm watching for her milk to come in but I still check on her regularly and she's really over me oh she's she's stirring a little bit and huffing and puffing don't mind me no need to have a conversation she's not a nice pig so I'm not getting in there but I am excited for a little baby piglets there such cute creatures you, f you feel like they should be snugglier than they are though they're just these tiny little balls of energy and so strong and so cute, but not snugly. It's been a dry couple of days, so I do not expect that there are gonna be mushrooms out here. We got a pretty good harvest of shiitakes the other day. Yeah, there's not anything out here. I was noticing little jasmine flowers. It's blooming up in the trees. It's really lovely when you're driving down the road right now, um, just through this area. There's yellow all in the trees from the jasmine and the wisteria down the road. Oh, it smells so good. Um, is starting to bloom. I love it. Lots of jasmine flowers on the ground here. Not a lot of mushrooms, but that's okay. Oh, hey, look at this. That's some wild blackberries right there. So this is Papa T's land, which is next door to ours, and he lets us use land, and we keep our pig over here, and which we just have the one here right now. We'll have more soon. Obviously, she's about to have babies. But then we have like our mushroom woods out here, which this is just a small wooded area that we put inoculated logs in, and we use the woods here as shade because most mushrooms need shade in order to grow. And I haven't like really thoroughly foraged through this land very much. Um, a little bit like we've gone through. Will's found some cool stuff over here. Like he showed me a tree that was in these woods. It's a good replacement for bay leaves. We found a few things. There are persimmons growing and some different nut trees. But there's so much food. Anyway, I just saw those blooms and got excited. Wild blackberries were a big deal to me whenever I lived in Arkansas, like long before I had a farm because I used to go forage them. Come on, bear! Come on! Are you the happiest dog? I think you are. So right over here on the back side of the barn is where soon we're gonna start building the fence for the goats. So we're actually supposed to start it today, but we are Tomorrow is the opening day of our farmer's market that we're hosting downtown Batesburg, South Carolina uh, by Beulah, our coffee roastery. And Maya was down there yesterday getting stuff set up and ready. And then he thought he was gonna get it done and start the fence today, but alas, such is life. <laughs> we adjust and we adapt. Uh, the goats are fine. They're in a double stall in the barn with plenty of hay. However, I know they're going to be really happy to have this space. And the whole plan, I, I kind of recapped this recently in a video, but in, if you missed it, we were going to build a barn out here, but being really crammed for time this uh, spring, I kind of got my routine down in that barn, which has a milk room and is incredibly convenient. And so I suggested to Maya maybe just building a yard here and putting a gate through that goes straight to that barn. He really liked that idea because it takes a really big task off of his to-do list right as we're about to break ground on our house. So it works for all of us. So, you know, I was talking about mushrooms. A lot of people are starting to show that they're getting morels, like they're starting to pop up places. I think I'm a little too Southern for morels. I know there are some people that find them in this general region. I've never found one. I never found them in Arkansas either and they grow there and I looked but I would really like to find some morels. I hear wonderful things <laughs> about them, but I've never had one. The issue we have with foraging mushrooms here is that so much of the wooded areas have been replaced with pine agroforestry, um, which I mean, we need that if we're gonna have like toilet paper and paper and telephone poles and all of the things that they make with those pine trees. But um, it is also a bummer 
the videos I've posted before where I go foraging with Will, he actually, his family has some land that's a bottoms area, so it's super wet, so it was not usable for agroforestry. Therefore, they have tons of like really old hardwoods, and it's, it's like a unicorn of a place that you can go and actually still forage mushrooms there. I still have so much to learn about foraging, but it's a really fun thing. I, I did a podcast, I recorded it today. It'll be out on the main platform next week. It went on Patreon today, um, talking about granny skills. And I didn't really go into foraging and stuff like that, but you know, what is it? What is it? The French have a word for this. It's called the spirit of the stairs. All the things that you think about saying as you're walking away from a conversation. I have that when I do podcasts. The rest of the day, I'm like, oh yeah, I should have mentioned this. I should have mentioned that. Foraging is a granny skill that I want to be better at. I feel like I'm, I'm in my prime right now for learning that skill so that by the time I am in my old age and I'm, I'm you know, sharing my skills. <laughs> <laughs> that are so proficient. I want to be an expert forager. Now I'm like a baby forager. Look at all the pollen, guys. <laughs> you see how clean this is? That's because it's on the back of my dress. <laughs> That's crazy. Hello, garden. Unfortunately, the freeze the other night actually damaged my little peas. Not too bad, but a little bit. It's just it had been so warm. Peas are very frost hardy. But any plant that is frost hardy still needs acclimation. So like if it's really warm for weeks on end and then it freezes, stuff will re react really poorly. Um, I came out that morning after the freeze and was kind of taking a look at everything. And I didn't think anything was really damaged. And nothing was just insanely damaged. Like Will had wrapped the Nanking cherries and he wrapped some of the fruit trees because they were all blooming, they were all fine. And most things fared pretty well. I did see over here, I had some cannas coming up that they definitely got a little damage around the edge, but they'll, they'll bounce back, it'll be okay. I was so concerned about the greenhouse with a freeze coming. Um, I, I really just put my focus in protecting it, but mostly the garden's fine. I, I noticed those peas were damaged. Hopefully they'll come back. That's so strange. I could have covered them. I could have like mulched them or put a frost fabric over them. I just assumed they'd be okay because they're peas. Like I've had peas that have withstood much more intense freezes than what we had the other day. That was barely a freeze, a little bit of frost, uh, but Again, it had been almost 80 degrees the, the few days before that. 26 Celsius. Oh, that's warm. That's a big that's a big dip. I can understand why they had a fit about it. I kind of had in my mind that I was going to come out here and transplant some beets out, but I remembered that I wanted to check on the pig, so I'm, I think I missed my window. It's getting pretty dark out. Look at these little dudes here. I don't know, you can see his tags from that way. How cute are these? So these are my micro dwarf tomatoes. Um, some of them are still like just barely coming up. I'm still having some germination, but overall they're looking pretty good. I also have some more micro dwarf tomatoes that I've got to separate. Aren't these the funniest little things? Like these are not tiny baby tomato plants. I mean, they're young but they're just teensy. So cute. This one's called Little Birdie. So I'm doing my green stalk full of micro dwarf tomatoes. Uh, and I also got a few other varieties that are tumblers. So when I went last summer with my friend Matthew to that big garden show in Ohio called Cultivate, um, it's, it was a trade show. So it was really more for like people in the industry I was a, I, I, it wasn't really for people like me. I mean, I was like a kid in the candy store getting to look at all the new things, but I saw multiple vendors selling this tomato that is like a major tumbling variety that had a whole lot of fruit meant for containers. And I ended up going online and finding some seeds. I think I got them at Totally Tomatoes. I can't remember. It's been some months ago that I bought them. But I plan on doing kind of a mix in the green stalk. So some will be micro dwarfs that are more upright, and then some will be like tumbler tomatoes that hang down with a lot of fruit. This is also a little dwarf variety. Look at these. Like they're 
they're so tiny. For comparison, the full size varieties that I started at the exact same time look like this. Like these are the same age plants, the same maturity plants. That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> All right, I don't want to get distracted out here because I was going to go down and look at the, the high tunnels too. Messing around with stuff in there. I'll, I'll look up and it'll be pitch black outside. The saga of the in-ground mint situation continues. It's not even like actually warmish spring. And look at this. I don't hate it. I mean, the way that it's growing up on the side of the beds. I mean, it, it's kind of nice looking. I would, I, as I've said, I wouldn't have necessarily chosen it, but given this or Bermuda grass, I'd cheer for the mint. Oh, we'll see what happens here as it bunches up along the edge. Another task on my to-do list, which I don't have time to do tonight because I had to cook dinner so I didn't get to come outside earlier, is that I want to put compost on top of these asparagus beds. They're coming up, I mean, pretty well, but I just want to give them a little, little extra something. You ready to run? Look at that tail. Oh look, our new baby is at the fence. Hope she doesn't run. So this is, oh, there she goes. Oh, she took off. Well, there's honey right there. And Honey had that little blonde heifer calf about a week ago. She is so cute. We've had three calves born so far this spring, all three of which are heifers, which is really awesome. I mean, heifers, I guess with beef cattle, it's not really the case, depending on how you're raising them. Of any animals, typically speaking, the females are more valuable than the males except for meat animals, in which case males grow out faster and larger. Um, so, I mean, steer or bull calves are still very valuable, but um, we're, we're excited to be getting heifers. It's nice. All right, let's pop in here. I'm gonna sneak in the back. So this evening I shot multiple, like quick tutorial videos for the farmer's table. This is my other channel if you don't know that exists. I have a cooking channel also. It's relatively new. I started a handful of months ago to kind of show what to do with the things that you grow or that if you're just trying to cook from scratch. I mean, I'd like to be able to help people in that. But I was making a list of videos I was gonna shoot this week and I was wanting to just, while I'm in that mode of thinking, come out here and really see what's pressing. So I've got a lot of um, heads of like Romanesco cauliflowers and broccolis that are all just right on the verge of going to seed. And we've eaten a lot of it roasted. So I, I picked a lot of it the other day and did some quick pickles. I did a video of that. Some of these, it's kind of sad because they're really on the smaller side, but I think I'm gonna end up having to pick them really small because it's getting warm and it's gonna send everything straight to seed. Like you can see this one is getting all loose. Now you can still eat it like this. What I've been doing with these, is cutting them and roasting them with like oil, salt, pe pepper, and a hot oven, kind of like you would sprouting broccoli. And it's really delicious like that. But you do miss out on the beauty of the Romanesco cauliflower by waiting for it to be almost sprouting. I do have quite a few rutabagas that are kind of getting to the point of being usable. They're not huge, but that's really cool. And I've also been harvesting carrots here and there just to add to things like salads. Oh, look at this. I have a strawberry. This is my first one this spring. I did not expect that this early. And it tastes so good. Red all the way through. Whenever I was very young, <laughs> probably foraging blackberries, young adult, desperate for food security, desperate to do all the things that I get to do now. I went to the farmer's market and I bought like local strawberries. It was my first time ever to eat local strawberries. Prior to that, I only ever had ones from the grocery store, which are picked partially unripe so they can be shipped and they can still be good when they hit a grocery store shelf. And so often when you bite into a grocery store strawberry, it's white on the inside. 
because it isn't actually it wasn't fully ripe and I remember <laughs> buying these strawberries at the farmers market so long ago and uh, being absolutely amazed that it was red all the way through I just couldn't believe it and so now anytime I bite a strawberry that's red all the way through I'm like I just get to eat this whenever I want I mean, not whenever I want. I want to eat them every day, all year round. I get to eat them when they're in season and my kids don't get to them first. I've been watching this bed because I'm, I'm hoping my dahlias all come back up in here. I think they will. Oh, actually, look at that. There's a tiny little bit of growth right there. So this, I'm just gonna leave them. I'm not gonna try to transplant all the dahlias that are in here. Even though I'm doing lots of flowers in this tunnel, um, I'm just going to leave them in this bed. Almost time to wrap it up with the brassicas. Got a handful more cabbages here to do something with. I'll probably make sauerkraut with at least some of those because I haven't made any this season. And I need to. I need to make a good bit and put it in the back of the fridge. It lasts a long time. I would love to know. I'm doing this this new thing on the farmer's table. And I asked there, too, for what people wanted. So you may have already seen this question if you watch that channel, too. But um, I'm wanting to do, like, quick tutorial videos. Like, reference videos. Five minutes. You know, I mean, just real short. I know I'm chatty. I know that I like doing vlogs where I have people in the kitchen and it, I do these cook with me vlogs, which is kind of like in the same vein of a garden tour, like, hey, just hang out with me and as I see things, I'll tell you the thoughts that come to mind. I know there's lots of good information in there. We just got to trigger it somehow. And it, the cook with me videos are like that too, but they're like 30 plus minutes. So I wanted to do like these quick tutorial reference videos that people could just get to real quick when they're in the middle of doing something and they're needing the quick information. So if there's anything like that that you can think of, like, hey, I'd love you to show me how to make XYZ quickly, will you please let me know? And if it's something you'd like to see long format, I, I'd love that information as well. Making videos for Farmer's Table has been a huge blessing. I love doing it. It, it, <laughs> it is like the, um, what's for dinner rut that you can get in like oh and it's like when you don't know what to cook for dinner it's like everything you've ever cooked evades you and all the things that you confidently know how to cook also evade you and you're like what do I cook for dinner I have no idea and that's the same thing I've been dealing with when making videos for farmer's table like do I even know how to cook so silly so my ranunculus are a little spotty I do have blooms I've cut some. I'm hoping, and they're starting to get powdery mildew, and we opened the walls up, and I'm hoping that that will help. I actually failed to bring scissors out here. I should cut these um, at the very least. If I, like when I've seen that one or two that I didn't get to cut, I've just been deadheading them so that they'll hopefully keep blooming. And here is my missed opportunity for lots of kimchi. These are Napa cabbages that just couldn't handle the heat. They had just started to head and then they just incessantly went to seed. Such is life in balmy South Carolina. Whenever, if you feel remotely jealous for the jasmine blooming and the wisteria and the fact that I'm wearing a, a sleeveless shirt, um, <laughs> know that brassicas are a struggle and in another handful of months it'll be triple digits and you'll walk outside and melt have to swim to your car because of the humidity oh bear what did you get into you're dripping it's hard to show exactly how dusky it is out here because my camera so compensates for it but it is i'm losing light quickly we have a few geese that are sitting on nests i think maybe either a duck that's getting ready to sit she's collecting eggs or maybe she's sitting, I don't know, I thought she was, and then I've seen her not there a couple times, but we should have lots of goslings and ducklings soon. Um, we're actually probably gonna to sell some of these just because we have too many birds on this pond, and I'm gonna let them finish sitting and let them get their babies a little bit older, um, and then probably cut these numbers down some. Just because whenever you get an imbalance of, especially with too many males, especially the ducks, they're just really rough on the hens. They really are very fun to watch though. I like coming out here and hanging out with them. Oh, it's so beautiful out.
it's so weird to me like when I come around and I just I love my farm so much um I loved my old farm. This farm is just mind-bogglingly beautiful, especially dusky evening like this, starting to cool off. We're about to break ground on our house, and it got delayed by like a few weeks uh, due to paperwork. We were supposed to break ground the first week of March, and then it got delayed. So now it's the first week of April. Anyway, it's it's weird to me because I'm shooting these videos with like these shots of that big open field. And it's weird knowing bear is chasing a killdeer bird. Um, well, he's getting his exercise. He's not going to catch that bird. That's good. <laughs> but uh, I keep thinking about how we're going to look back on this video and it's going to be so foreign to remember that field being empty. Earlier today, I'll see, I'll get the link and I'll put it down below if you want to go down the little Roots and Refuge throwback wormhole but someone commented on a video from years ago my friend jill was in it which if you don't know this my friend jill now has a youtube channel and lives at my old farm we sold our old property to them when we moved out of state and um she was just in this video and i was talking about how i keep trying to get her to start youtube in the video and she's like rolling her eyes in the video so it's hilarious to look down you know five six years down the road um, at what can happen that we had no clue at that point of course ben was like the cutest little thing in that video he's like three years old and it's it's a good throwback if you want to go if you want to go see our roots a little bit but it's cra it's crazy and I, I know that I spend so much time cataloging doing what I do. I mean, like I record my life for my job, which is amazing. And it's crazy because I have this whole time capsule of history of our our journey and my babies growing up and my dog being a puppy and all of me being like clueless on everything that I now know how to do. And it's just wild. But I it has made me acutely aware of what is happening today that is going to feel like a foreign memory five years from now and us building this house is one of those things i mean five years from now we will be living in it and have lived in it and broken it in and it'll be comfortable it'll be home and now it's just an empty field and i get to record that anyway it's super dark i knew i wasn't gonna get anything done this evening i just wanted to turn the camera on and uh bring you guys with me on my little dusky walk that i like to take especially when it's nice enough to do it in a tank top thanks for hanging out with me today i bless you until next time